FNM's message on the gambling referendum has been loud and clear. And it is, if you don't know, vote no. If you don't know, vote no. Tonight, our party leader, Dr. Hubert Minnis, who is also the MP for Kalani, will explain whether that message remains the same or whether that message has changed or has been refined. But as of now, we know if you don't know, vote no. And let me also thank all of you for coming out tonight. Now, the, the object of this meeting has been to get a clear message from the Member of Parliament on the issue of this gambling referendum. <coughs> now, you'll be invited to give your views and opinions. We have a mic set up there. I wish we'd put it over there, so, since the crowd is over there. But we have a mic over there so that you can express your views, opinion, and more importantly, to put questions to the Member of Parliament regarding the, the referendum. And we'd like for you to state your name and your address when you come, and I'll indicate to you once he's completed his address, we can file one by one at the mic to give either your opinion or a question. It's, it's, it's on, it's just, oh, you put it over there? Thank you. But our MP, Dr. Minnis, will give his remarks regarding this issue of the gaming gambling referendum. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you all for coming here this evening. Good evening. I want to give you some briefing about this entire gambling referendum that we're presently discussing and will be debating on the Wednesday in Parliament. As you know, the PLP and their Charter for Governance had said that they will um, introduce a referendum for lottery. They subsequently had changed and um, switched to website, website gambling. And now they're in a situation where they're talking both website and lottery. And it is our opinion that it's very difficult to ask anyone to vote for a particular referendum or for a particular issue unless they themselves understand it. The Prime Minister himself just the other day admitted that he has never been in a web shop and there's a lot of things that occur in web shop that he did not know. So he himself is admitting that he don't know exactly what occurs in web shop. But he asking you to vote um, um, for web shop licensing so that these can be legalized and function as a legal entity. The problem is, when we look at it and assess it thoroughly, we would have all, when you look at the qualification to open one of these web shops once it's licensed, we would have all, throughout our years, taught our kids what is right and what is wrong. We would have taught our kids that while growing, they must love and respect each other. They must always abide by the law, and they must always live by the law. That's what we've taught our kids, and that's what we live by. We feel that if they follow the law, they'll be more a more decent citizen. We also would have spent most of our hard-earned cash. Many of us, some would have scrubbed floors, some would have worked in houses as housekeepers, maids. Some would have worked two, three jobs to send their kids off to school to obtain an education. Some would have sacrificed the quality of their own life, sacrificing to ensure that their kid or their young, younger ones receive a proper education. Because we all feel that once you receive a proper education, then nobody can take that away from you. And you can take that any part of the world and 
live quite comfortably. But what the government is saying, now, what the government is saying, once the web shop is licensed, in order for you to qualify to obtain a license, you must have experience. You must have integrity, respect, etc. Now, to have experience, it means that you must have been broken the, breaking the law to have experience, because you could not experience how to run a web shop legally, because it's illegal. So what they're asking you is all of our teaching that we taught our kids in the past in terms of legality, if they want to come back and get a job in this country to run such an entity, then they don't qualify because our teaching was wrong. In order for them to qualify, they must have broken the law. That's point number one. So that is a serious issue for any government to tell or inform your kids whom you would want to return and come back as respectable citizens in this country, your children would not, under the qualifications that the government putting forth, your children would not qualify to open up a web shop. Why? Because our teaching was wrong. We taught them to respect the law, but in order to qualify, they must have broken the law. So that is a serious issue. The other thing is, in order for them to qualify, they must pay a certain amount of funds, which would be very, very cost prohibitive. But the question was asked, the individuals who are involved in this entity today, who's breaking the law, should they qualify? Do they truly have integrity? And that's a question one has to answer. Not only that, they must pay so many millions of dollars in order to obtain a license. But what they're going to use is illegal money to purchase this license. So should that be used? Because today, those same individuals who are engaged in web shop gambling, they cannot deposit their monies in the bank because they do not meet the bank status of lawyer status. The banks basically reject it, and therefore all their monies must either somehow penetrate the society outside the banking system, or they must store it somewhere else, but they cannot deposit their money in the bank. So that in itself means that their monies are obtained by some illegal means. But let's look at what happens in Webshop. Growing up, we would have all known of the ball that Percy threw and whatever else. But they've gone beyond that. And when, when you look at what happens in web shop today, it's truly synonymous with the casinos that exist. Paradise Island, Cable Beach Strip. But it has even more games than the casinos that exist. In the casinos though, all the equipment, so all those machines that are used in the, in the casino environment, those machines undergo a rigorous inspection process. Then there are regulations within the casino to ensure that they meet certain standards. In the web shop, that has all the same equipment that the casino have and more, those equipments undergo no form of inspection. There's no regulation. If you gamble in the casino, the odds are always in favor of the house. I am informed that the house always have a 70% odd. In other words, there's only a 30% chance of you winning and a 70% chance of the casino winning. That's the odds in a legitimate, regulated environment. But our government want to send us into an environment where there's no regulation today where there's no form of inspection of the machines and equipments that are utilized through these web institutions. And I am informed that the odds are 99 to 1, meaning that there's a 99% chance that the house will win and only 1% you. But in the legal entity in the casino situation, you're talking about a 70 to 30. But what are the other problems there? When you look at it, the web shops now have 
ATM machines. You know, therefore, you can withdraw money, you can send money to all the various different islands or, or countries that may have such entity. So you can place money in a web shop here in New Providence and an individual in Long Island, Inagua, wherever, can withdraw. So they're really running an underground banking system, an unregulated banking system. And I want you to think of what we went through in terms of the banking system in 2002 when we had to bring in all of those new financial laws. We had a legitimate banking system, but still, we had to bring in all sorts of financial laws in order to remain on par with the international market. You now have an undercurrent illegal banking system that exists with the web shops. They cannot deposit their money in the bank, but yet they're functioning like a bank, where monies can be moved all over. It means that the international banking system in the market will be watching what happens here. And sooner or later, there will be impact so that what we went through in 2002, we can go through again. That would place, especially those individuals who are working within the banking system, system in a serious predicament. So that would compromise, especially the middle class. So those individuals who are presently working in the banking system, who are living in Westridge, North, South Westridge, Sea Beach, who are living in the West, etc. What happens is those individuals' jobs will be compromised because of these web shops owned by a handful of individuals. So it's not owned by us, the Bahamians, now it's owned by a handful of individuals. Two, three, four, five individuals. But the government only want to license a few of them. But you don't qualify to be licensed or enter that type of arena. But let's look at what the problems you can encounter. I'm also informed that there is collaboration between one or two of the web shops here in New Providence and similar web shop in West Africa. What that would mean, the individual in West Africa, if they're selling drugs, trafficking money, human trafficking, whatever, they can deposit their money in West Africa through the web shop and it can be withdrawn here in the Bahamas. So the Bahamas can be known as some illegal drug trafficking or, or money laundering center of the, of the world. You can imagine what impact that would have on your society. You can talk about uh, terrorists channeling money back and forth, utilizing the Bahamas as an outlet. These are realities. You can talk about individuals engaged in other illegal activities. So this is beyond just numbers. We're talking about all sorts of illegal activities. What you knew and what we understood in the past is just the ball, the person throwing the ball or whatever. But it's beyond that. So individuals get involved in other criminal activity, be it drugs, and therefore clean their money through the system. And their money, once legal, not properly regulated, etc., their money can be cleaned through this underground mechanism. That's what can happen today. Also, individuals who are involved, be it in child pornography, child sex trade, adult sex trade, human smuggling, all of these Bahamas can be the center for because all that money can be washed through this underground banking channel. All we're saying is that the Bahamian public does not truly understand all of this. And you can't ask me to vote for something that I don't understand. I need to know a lot more so that I can make proper and intelligent judgment as to whether or not I want this entity here, or whether or not I want a legal entity where you have official casino gambling, gambling removing the discrimination, etc., etc. 
in terms of the financial laws, there are today financial laws on the books. So at the ATM machines, the money wiring, wire transfer that's going on in the web shops today, the money transfer, etc., going on today, there are laws on the books that we were forced to introduce to the financial sector years ago that can be applied to these institutions and shut that down. Because if you don't shut down at least that underground system, then we will have problems later on. So what we had recommended in the Free National Movement, we have not told individuals how they should go. We feel that they should be more informed as to what's happening so that they can make more intelligent judgment on how to vote, be it yes or be it no. Do they want to vote on it? for a type of gambling where only a handful of individuals um, would qualify or would receive license for this type of entity? We feel that moving forward, there should be a lot more discussion, a lot more involvement. And we feel that there should be some form of committee, just like you've had in the past, where you've had Blue Ribbon Committee for Health, another committee. We feel that there should be a similar type of committee. A committee where you have involvement of nonpartisan individuals, where churches can be involved, commercial entity can be involved, unions can be involved, employers, employees, individuals employed, unions can be involved, banking sector. And through this committee, you can go throughout the various different islands, do all of the various different interviews, etc., so that individuals will be properly informed as to exactly what the government is asking them to vote for. We feel that once going that route, then you'd be in a better position to vote not only on rare shop, shop gambling, not only on lottery, because utilizing the same type of committee, you'd be able to receive a lot more information in terms of lottery gambling also. Where it's beneficial, where in terms of lottery, should be just state-owned, should be state in conjunction with Bahamian's own in terms of share, share offering, etc., etc. All of these can be done and judged by a committee where you have your input. But also look at the same time, web shop, lottery, and you can also look at whether or not gambling is discriminatory practice in terms of casino should remain or remove. You can then make definitive decisions, and therefore the entire problems or issues that we face today, utilizing that system, we'd be able to resolve and deal with appropriately. There's a lot I can't say, but I'm here tonight essentially to entertain and receive your input as to how you feel about moving forward with this. What I can say is that in Galani, we ran an online survey and we looked and viewed and determined how you respond or how you feel about we have shop gambling here in the Bahamas. What I can say, that the survey that we did within the Kalani constituency, 79% of you within Kalani who participated in the survey said no. 21% of you who participated in the survey voted yes. That was Kalani's decision in the online survey that we did within the Kalani constituency. So we basically have brought back as to how those involved in the survey feel within the Kalani constituency. 79% said no, and 21% said yes. So I think at this point in time, I would uh, entertain any questions that you may have and listen to how you feel um, we should go about this. Okay, so what we'll do now is you can just step up to the microphone. Let's put in the aisle, Seth. 
and feel free to either give a comment. Any further questions, <coughs> comments? Remember, the laws that we introduced 2002 and beyond for the banking sector today would apply to this undercurrent banking world that occurs at the web shop. But they don't, and that's why they cannot deposit their monies in the bank today. It's illegal for them to deposit their money. So if they make a million dollars today, they cannot deposit it. The bank refused to accept it because it's illegal. So what they would do in Burmi is try to find some other avenue to spend that money. So the questions, comments? While you are getting ready to come, um, let me put one to the member of Parliament. This week, Parliament will be debating certain gambling bills. Am I, am I correct? Can you let us know which, what are those? Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Okay. You never travel without a lawyer. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Uh, one of the, well, the main bill the Parliament will be debating on this week is the, the Constitutional um, Referendum Amendment Bill. And that is to amend the Constitutional Referendum Act. I think that's the correct case. Yes. And um, that act, um, when it was first passed, was only an act to regulate or to deal with um, a constitutional referendum only. As all of you may be aware, uh, this referendum um, has nothing to do or has no effect on the Constitution because the Constitution is not being amended or the Constitution or the Bahamian people are not being asked the question where they'd have to alter the Constitution. And uh, Dr. Minnis alluded to it earlier, is this discriminatory clause which prevents behaviors from gambling in the casinos. That is not being dealt with at all. But what is being dealt with is this, what we call quote, unquote, public opinion poll or a mere referendum or a survey. And in order for that to be, to take effect constitutionally or legally, they would have to amend the Constitutional Referendum Act to allow for the parliamentary registrar to conduct a quote unquote public opinion poll or a referendum. Mm -hmm. And so that is being debated in the House this week. All right, thank you so much. Dean? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, it is quite obvious today in 2012 that technology uh, has transformed every sector that we could put our hands on. 
And I feel that the lottery in the Bahamas is no different. I would like to know, though, whether we in the Free National Movement support a state lottery or we would just support exactly like you said, the red house. You know, the red house. They support the red house, don't get me wrong. <laughs> this, this is what I'm asking you. I, I need to know that. Okay? And secondly, secondly, uh, I believe, and I believe it's the concern of many other Bahamians, that I heard the Prime Minister said the other day that he would, you know, uh, look at the referendum uh, on the 28th of uh, next month. January. Yeah. I believe too that that is insufficient time for us as Bahamians to sit down, analyze, and dissect exactly what is being said to us. I believe that we, as, and I, I think. I heard a comment from yourself earlier today or over the weekend that it is insufficient time and I do support that, okay? I believe that we need to take a, another look at that date because I don't think it's sufficient time for us to dissect. And if we as, a, as the Free National Movement did win government exactly what direction that we would have been taken today, other than what now the government is now taken. But first of all, the lottery Norway of shop gambling was placed in the manifesto with respect to the free national movement. Free national movement believed in, in transparency and accountability. Um, what we're rec what I'm recommending, what we're recommending um, to the government is to establish a committee, some form of national commission, the Women Committee, who would do their work in terms of finding out more information as to exactly what occurs, what is involved with web shop, what is involved with lottery, etc. Would interview various entities, um, unions involved, um, employers, employees, churches involved, etc. And that would take time. That can't be done in, in, in by January. That would take at least about six, eight months, six to twelve months. What that would do is allow you to obtain more information as to exactly what is happening, what you can expect tomorrow, how it would benefit you, what are the advantages, what are the disadvantages, and then you'd be in a better position to make an intelligent decision as to whether or not you want such an entity. And just a good question, Don. Uh, Mr. Leader, Mr. Leader, Party Leader. I think everybody recognizes it and uh, we take the same position that the whole process is flawed, going about it. Is there any public protests planned by the FN English on the national level? At this particular time, no.
4,000, I think I've heard, persons who are employed. Three, now, 3,000. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, sorry. Uh, yet still, there's also talk that only about 3,000, 300 paid NIB contribution. Well, what are the real facts? I mean, do you know how many people are really employed? Because what, what's, that's the argument that's being used to substantiate the fact that all of these people will be out of, unemployed if the referendum fails. What I can say is one day when I'm members of parliament would have punched those numbers. Um, the prime minister would have said how much money is um, introduced in the system through national insurance contribution. And what I can say, I don't want to preempt his debate on Wednesday. What I can say is he will release the facts as to how much the country should have been receiving if these many individuals were employed, even at minimum wage, this figure may or may not be right. But he would crunch those numbers. He's crunching those numbers and he would release those figures um, on Wednesday. I don't want to preempt this debate, but uh, the facts will be released there. Yeah. As a government, um, the Fed said their position in, we gave you an example, your poll 79% women no and 21% women yes. I think the Fed said, it will, let's say, the poll uh, referendum reflects that in January, what they would do, what would be the outcome if that happens? Well, this, was, this was the Kalani poll now? Yeah, I'm just saying, just, let's say that reflects the poll that comes out in January, what the government's going to do. Let's say the same results happen. Of course, right. just the conversation. What does the government intend to do? Do they intend to shut down the web shops? Do they intend to, what they do, what they intend to do? Are they just going to set up? I, the government, the mm -hmm. exactly. opposition, I don't know what they're going to do. But what, what, what Christy did say, what he said on record, is that if the baby people vote no, then he will close down the web shops. He said that, that's on record. Okay, and, and that's what I want to know. Um, the other question for me is, we had a lot of first being spoken about, I think in the paper today, he said over 100 probably about 100,000 persons or so gamble. Where do you get those numbers from? Well, see, that's why we said you need to establish commission so that all this guesswork that's going on, we would know the facts. You would know the facts as to the amount of money that is generated through national insurance. You would know the facts as the amount of money that individual generate. You would know the facts as to what profit they receive. You'd know the facts as to the amount of money that goes through the system. And therefore, once you have all this vital information in terms of what exactly, how much monies are made through, because they sell lot of lottery tickets there also, how much money is made generated through lotto, how much monies are generated through the casino online gambling that they do, and whatever else they do there. So you would know these facts, and therefore you'd be in a better position to make an intelligent determination as to what to do. And that's why the Free National Movement's position is that we should have some form of commission that would look at this thoroughly, would involve the Bahamians, the churches, etc., cetera, um, where you can make an um, intelligent determination moving forward. My other question, we talked about the integrity of the web game specifically. I have a question about the numbers because right now, from what I don't understand, is that they use numbers from foreign models. Mm -hmm. Now, they legitimize and legalize gaming and web shops. Where would they get those numbers from? Have they proposed a set where those numbers would be generated from? Because I don't think a web shop would be able to generate its own numbers. Well, those are all questions that have to be answered. Those are all questions. And um, that's why, that, that's all a part of information. Um, you can't ask me to vote where none of this information is available. The last one is we talked about uh, discriminatory clause in the Constitution. Why was it made discriminatory in the first place? Just for perspective. That was in the Constitution. And so that would have been from when I think that gives good perspective on what your vote should be.
because you understand why the law was made that way to begin with? That was a political decision. Um, that was a long time ago. Um, it was a political decision. I don't want to go into uh, the details of this particular time, but I would, would be more than happy to, to go into it with you. What I, what I would say it was a political decision at that time. Um, that's all I'll say for now. OK, thank you. Anyone else, or you want to give a comment? Question? Sorry, go ahead, sir. Um, Louis Reading, my concern is, you know, what's the rush? You know, we have other, we have a lot of issues and things to deal with um, the, um, around the court that you have murders and stuff like that. Um, what, what government really can, supposed to really get into the fellows in the court, out on bail and stuff like that, they, these are issues they should, they could um, amend the law and so on. Why the, why the gambling, why you rush the gambling? What, why? You know, it has to be a reason. And um, we, I, I don't think we have lots more issue than, 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 than the gambling. More important, you know, you can't just, the fellows sitting on the street, on the, on the corner, a couple of afternoons, and there's some shooting gun at them and, and um, robbing them, you know? Do you put some laws in place for that? And, and, and deal with the gambling. I mean, you got time for time, you got five years. Why they don't do it in, in a couple months? No, we feel like you, um, what's the rush? You have a whole island to clean up. Uh, best pay is torn up. Right. Hitting portals, etc. those are more urgent. You have people who are unemployed or looking for jobs, those are more urgent. You have people whose lights are off, they can't pay their light bill. Those are more urgent. But to the government, this is very urgent. Um, to us and the people, we feel that the human element is much more urgent than us trying to pass a law to benefit three individuals as opposed to dealing with the Bahamian situation from a humanistic point of view. Because this is actually not a many of the Constitution, this is essentially just an opinion vote. Mm -hmm. So we don't, it's not really a referendum or such. Yeah. It's not a constitution. You could call it, it's any other referendum, and I'll show you the bill. Mm -hmm. The bill really says it could be any other referendum that the parliament should register uh, as control of the area. But uh, when they say any other referendum, can you Sorry, can you hear me? No, thank you. Would you oblige us? <laughs> So, so let, let's take that question one, I mean, at one point further. Even if Parliament does pass an amendment, is government duty bound to follow the results? That is a very, that is a very, very good question because this doesn't. Um, There's nothing in the bill, right? Address that. No. Uh, government, when? To walk into the mic. Yeah. Oh, sorry. sorry. That is very important because this doesn't even address that. Um, when you vote for a government, you would, have, you would expect them to be responsible and to have a voice for you, for the people. And so even though 
um, let's just say 70% uh, vote no and 30% vote yes. The government doesn't really have to follow it, but because they've already put it to the debate people, obviously they have be pressured into doing so. But this, 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 the act, this, this bill, sorry, um, doesn't address that, and so uh, that should. So be even if a no vote, they can still go ahead. Yeah. And that should be yeah. one of the talking points. Yeah. Uh, yeah. as well. They can still go ahead, but I mean they will I mean, think about it. <laughs> I think they, they, they don't want you know that much problem. Uh, but another thing that, that Doc mentioned, someone asked about the regulatory framework from the central bank. Um, they're not, right now, right now, uh, as I understand it, they're not operating as a bank. And so when you look at uh, what the job of the central bank is, that is to regulate those banks and those commercial entities. And so the central bank cannot go to these web shops and say, hey, we need whatever the banks pay. I don't know what the, that's based on the Banks and Trust Act or the Bank and Trust Regulation. They're not a part of that. Because even though they're operating this, as Doc mentioned earlier, they're really doing this underground thing. You see? And so it would be difficult for them to go, the central bank, to regulate, to regulate that, that sort of thing, that banking, what they're doing um, on the ground. And so, We don't know what it is. We call it a web shop. <laughs> but, 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 and Doc mentioned it earlier. You have so much, so much baby going on in that environment. You have money laundering. And I read something in the newspaper the other day about um, the U.S. The U.S. Um, watching what's going, watching us because of what's going on. And so you have money laundering, you have, um, when you look at the financial transactions reporting app, and that's why a lot of the banking institutions don't accept their money. You have to report any reasonable transaction, and that is anything over $10,000. Um, you have to report it to the, um, to the financial, it's a body. To tell them, yeah, financial intelligence unit to say to them that, hey, this money is coming from somewhere. We've had situations, I've, I've just been involved in one, whereby um, there were persons who attempted to, to launder, those guys tried to, you know, they, they, they tried to open up bank accounts and deposit uh, large sums of money in these bank accounts. But when you look at the transactions that are going on, even if, if you look at the aggregate of $10,000 over one month, that should still be reported to the financial intelligence. Right. Right? So we have a lot of strict laws when it comes to dealing with quote with these web shops or numbers like number houses. And that is why I believe, and I'm not speaking because I don't I don't know much about it. And that is why I believe that there's an underground financial thing going on. And they have their own banks, they have their own APMs and stuff like that. Because it's very difficult for them to clean that money or make it legitimate. Okay, thank you, Mr. Curtis. Good evening. Uh, my MPI, thank you for this level of this conversation. Uh, in your presentation, you raised an issue that I thought was very profound. More profoundly is the issue of ATMs, and maybe but my brother attorney can enlighten us on the regulation or the management of ATMs. It would appear that the ATM is a conduit for circumventing certain uh, regulations. If I'm wrong, please enlighten me. If I'm correct, please expand my intelligence. <laughs> on the management and ownership of ATMs, um, I don't know if it is a fact that they do have ATMs. Yeah, yeah um, KTM machines, my understanding, just recently um, commenced within these account? shops about a year or so ago. Um, with the ATM machines, we have laws in place today through all the new finance laws that we had introduced. We have laws, compliance laws, etc., that can deal with those and therefore can deal with those appropriately today if the government wanted to shut 
that underground system down, the laws are there today to deal with. That's my point, because if, if in fact ATMs are there, and the license, one, when one apply for a license, the application states the precise and concise mode of business transacted. And so if initially an ATM was not part of the business transaction, then there appeared to be a serious deficit that ought to be dealt with. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you have a comment, or are you? I talked talk is the same. In a nutshell, with the private business says, no one really thinks that it's not fair enough. But whatever's going on in the whatever's going on underground, or whatever they're doing, that's not the way the perceived administration is walking right now. It's so irresponsible. It's irresponsible. And let's wait and see. understand is why at least under the FNM they go on and raid and take some of flowers money. <laughs> why are not they raiding or doing anything now? I mean what 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 can we do with the law of Christmas is coming? A lot of people <laughs> correct that they deal with all these different entities. Mm -hmm. All of this we need to know. You need to know the revenue stream, etc. so that you can make determinations and make decisions. All right. So I don't want you to leave out here saying the FNM is telling you to vote yes, the FNM is telling you to vote no. The FNM's position is we would like more information, the time is short, we want committee, etc. to look at it properly so that everybody can be involved in decision. Churches must play their role, commerce departments, uh, unions, etc., play their role. And after uh, appropriately informed, then you're in a better position to, to, to vote. Well, you know, because when they gave it up to church Sunday, Sunday before lunch, you know, the wife put it in the EG space and said, vote no. <laughs> 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 You can use the mic if you wish. We want more information. What, what was the recommendation on how we should go about getting this information and degree? No, no, no. What? We had a press release uh, today also, a press conference. What we've informed the government, what we put forth, is that they should have um, some form of commission, uh, just like what you know as Blue Ribbon Commission before. So you'll have some form of commission whose responsibility would obtain information. So
that you know exactly what's happening in the web shop. You know exactly what type of money is generated. Um, you know the, the various different games. Um, you have Lotto there as well as it's a casino. Right? They have more games than Paradise Island and Crystal yeah. Palace together. Right? So you need to know a lot more information and involvement of the behemoth at large before you can make determination in how to vote. Um, at present, you are being asked to vote for the benefit of two or three individuals. Um, we think it should be more involvement. We want a more process. We want to know what type of qualifications as you go forth. If you were licensing such entity, we need to know what are the transparency, what are the qualifications for licenses, how do you obtain those, etc. Such a level of playing field in a democratic society, if something like that is licensed, then you would want an opportunity to apply. I guess what I'm trying to understand is that uh, this forum is going to put forward that recommendation, or I'll read to We already, well, I just want to inform, um, especially my constituency, as to where we are today and what we put forward. And at the same time, I solicit from my constituency how they feel about it and their input. Okay, does anyone else want to tell how they feel? Now, what I can say is all the various different constituencies, um, the candidates, past candidates, MPs, etc., they would likewise be having meetings in their various different constituencies um, informing their constituents of the situation today and any current event moving forward, they will have regular meetings within the 38 constituencies by the FNM candidate and potential candidate keeping all their constituents abreast of current events so that you'll have involvement. So that's how I'm talking here today, some other constituents doing the same thing. Another concern, I guess, that um, if, if I, I understand that you're going to put forward, like, I think the concern with the, the date that we had in December was that, like you said, we were so uninformed, you couldn't vote as far as that goes. If you, you, didn't know which, you didn't know anything. So I'm, I'm just wondering if we, I mean, I'm, I assume we're going to try and push that date back again in January, or do we expect to get some information between those, those times, or are we going to expect to hear back? you know, more information on the subject, I mean, as no. far as what, what is intended to happen. I know, I feel like what, I, I'm sorry, I came in late, but I, I feel like a lot of people were concerned that only one area of gambling was being addressed and people wanted the broader issue to be addressed. Uh, you know, the other areas were being totally ignored, there was nothing being said. And I feel in general we want information to come to us and possibly in this forum of it's more information on the topic itself so that we are up to go out and to a referendum, if you have some items, what it is you're talking about. Yeah, that's what, that's what we're talking about. When we talk about ongoing committee looking at everything, we're looking, it should look at the discriminatory nature in terms of casino gambling. It should look at lotto as well as web shop. And you're in a better position to determine which is best for the Bahamas, if any are. And, but I guess I'm asking too, is that then, so the thought is that we will be hearing back, hopefully between now and then, on January. Well, we would be, the FNM would be pushing for a delay, a postponement, and to do it properly, transparent, and have proper process. Will we have another constituency meeting addressing this issue before the, before the day? The chairman calls the meetings, and I'm also a constituent here. So therefore, I show up. I, I, I do listen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but what happened is all, all the constituencies, all 38, will have regular meetings by the FNM candidates and potential candidates so that they would keep all their constituents up to date with not only gambling but other current matters. Um, that's the policy going forward. So there can possibly be two additional meetings going on here tonight. I'm here in my constituency. Pinewood had theirs last week. Other constituencies, there may be two, three other constituencies having meetings here tonight 
just like Grand Bahama, they are planning theirs also. Go, go ahead. I, I, think, I think this whole issue of um, web, web shop, I think this is to confuse the behavior people. Why didn't they just generalize this thing and ask us whether we, we, we are we're going to be known as a country that gambled or not? You know, but to tell us um, or ask this question about whether we want to legalize web shop, you know, I, I just think it's ludicrous. You know, do we want to, because as far as I'm concerned, gambling is done in this web, in this web shop. I've never gambled in my life. I've never, I, I have not the slightest idea what goes on, but I think it's, it's gambling. Ask us whether we want to be known as a country that gambles or not. You know, because as far as I'm concerned, it's like drinking, you will never stop people from gambling. You can't come to my house and tell me me and a couple of my friends want to get together um, and we want to play, use some money to, to play whatever, cocaine or whatever. That's in the privacy of my home, okay? But to, um, and then another problem I had with you comparing us to other countries. That our government or, or, or people who want us to legalize us, did they ever go into these other countries and see what's going on in these countries? How are they benefiting from gambling? The repercussion of gambling? Don't tell me nothing about Grenada or St. Kitts or whoever. Have you um, went into to, um, Nevada and really studied or, or looked at some statistic and know or, or understand that Nevada is one of the, the um, that has the highest um, prostitution, suicidal rate? Do you want us, a small country like the Bahamas, do you want us to, to, to do you want this to happen? You know, I, I think this whole exercise is, is, to, is to confuse people. And me, being a Christian, known as a Christian nation in the Bahamas, I don't think that we should want the world to know that, you know, we are a country of gamblers, okay? Look at um, Australia. Australia trying to be avoided, you know? Come on, that's, I mean, if you want to gamble, you will never stop it. Never stop it, because you cannot tell people what, how to do and what to do. But to put that, to, to stereotype us, you know, I think this country, we, we are the envy of the world. We don't have to follow them. You know, that's my two cents. Thank you, thank you for that. Anyone else want to give this? Now's the opportunity. I was going to say that the, let, uh, the policy is that the web shop operators will form Gamblers Anonymous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 One more question, guys. Yeah, from the point of view that, um, and I think that's what we say here, is that I think the studies need to be done. I think that's the information that needs to come to us. We need to, to show that we have looked at what has happened in other, in other areas that have had gambling. I mean, I am definitely promoting for non-discrimination. I don't feel that someone else should be able to come into my country and gamble and I should not be able to, to gamble. But if you're going to you know, try and make that, that case, at least make the case, go out and do the study and we need to see the results of those studies so that we can make an informed decision for us, ourselves. And I, I think that's what I hear with this form is I do for. But I, I just want to say I agree with her and I think you know, we really need to push in that direction. And that information needs to come to us. We need to see the presentations of that information so that we can make the decisions for ourselves. Okay. Right, um, just ask Dr. Minister to close. Um, there are no further yeah, comments. Sorry, Mr. Adler. I just have one comment. I just said a disclaimer. These are my, my, my thoughts and my feelings, not an official opposition party. I think the whole election process is polluted by, by money. Okay. 
Is there, is there the, uh, the evidence position at some point address election reform in terms of contributions towards elections? Does someone want to deal with that? I most certainly will be pushing for election reform. Election reform, I think, is essential. If you don't have election reform, especially financial reform, then your country essentially can be held by big business, by illegal transaction, drug boys, who can pump money into one or another party with no form of regulation, no accountability, numbers boys, who can pump money into one party or another. And if you listen to VJ Nordich when he spoke at Charles Maynard's funeral, there were a few words that he spoke was very significant and that resonated. You know, he was um, CDR leader at one point, and he said the one thing that he learned while being outside is that money wins election, and therefore it's very essential because if you don't have it, then you would be held by drug money, numbers money, illegal transaction, big business, etc. And therefore, um, it's not democratic. So I want to conclude by saying that the FNM is not asking you to vote yes or no. The FNM's position is if you don't know, it vote no. All right? And our position is to have a particular committee, Blue Ribbon Committee, some form of committee, who would look at the whole process um, with involvement of the people, getting people's views, at the same time obtaining all the information as to exactly what goes on in these stores, these shops, what are the advantages, what are the disadvantages, what are the outcomes, how will it affect you today, how will it affect you 20 years from today, how will it affect your kids today, how will it affect your kids tomorrow. All of these needs to be answered. And it cannot just be looking at web shops. You must look at web shops. Is that what we want? Is that beneficial for your society today or tomorrow? Do you want two or three individuals controlling such a financial entity? Or do you want transparency where each and every individual, if you choose to go that road, has an opportunity to apply and be judged on merit and a process as opposed to what you contributed to some political entity. At the same time, not just web shops, you, the same thing would apply to lotto. So that you look at that also and make determination if that's the way to go. And there's the discrimination with behemoths not gambling in the casino. That should also be looked at so that you can resolve all of the issues and make determinations as to which is best for you today and tomorrow. You cannot live in a vacuum. For any country to grow, you must have strategic planning. You must plan for tomorrow, not just today. We cannot continue to survive on catastrophic management. We must move beyond that. And that's our position. Thank you. Thank you.